So what we're demoing here today is primarily the Roku Remote Debugging Protocol. It's a new network protocol that allows you to debug a Roku channel remotely, not necessarily on the device. And what we're going to demo is this being integrated within a command line tool, which we've released as a reference implementation, and then kind of an internal proof of concept uh, Visual Studio Code plugin that shows some similar functionality. Um, and I'll explain to you what things are in what releases and, and what's been made public as we go along. So the first thing I thought I'd do is I'd show you, uh, run through really quickly the normal process for debugging a channel. So for instance, I'm here with my source code. Make sure I didn't leave a stop in there, I did. So I'm gonna get rid of this stop here. I don't wanna. So I've got my source code, I zip it up. Uh, now I go to the, the App Installer web page. I'm going to go and delete the old version in case it's the same as the version I'm about to upload in plain. Okay, so let's upload our new file and install it. Thing. So what I'm seeing on the screen is just some graphics. It's a very simple channel. Every time I press it OK, it moves some graphics around on the screen so we can see that it's actually processing the OK. In any case, that's a normal process you go through, right? And say so you wanted to debug it, you'd come in here and you'd, you'd add your stop in here, right? And zip it again. And then we go back to our app installer page and we upload the new version. And then because there's a stop in there, let me bring up another window. So normally what would you do is you put your stop in, you tell it to you put another window, tell it to port 8085, right? And here's your output from your channel. Okay, so my channel's obviously running. I see my print that's in init, and now I'm gonna hit OK, and in my handler, it's gonna hit the stop, and this is the old debugging functionality. So this is the old process. So quit the channel. So what we're talking about is we implemented this uh, binary debugging protocol so that um, a remote debugger can be used. Uh, so one of the things we did is we developed this reference implementation of a command line debugger, call it Roku Debug, and it's available um, on the web. So you can download it and I'm running version 1.0.1 here, which is the latest publicly released version. Let me go ahead and remove my stop. Let's, let's kind of duplicate the whole process here. My stop is gone. And then re-zip that up. And then all I need to do is run debug.py. And I've already set my uh, environment variables. So you can specify in the command line. You can also specify environment environment variables for your IP address of your Roku and your password if you'd like to do that rather than entering it um, on the command line. So now I just say uh, so I just say Roku debug and If you notice, I had to call this as Python 3. On this device, this is a Linux device, it generally just runs directly. Windows actually seems to do a pretty good job if you just run it. Um, on some platforms, you do need to specify Python or Python 3. And go. So if you notice, I haven't had to use the uh, app installer. Um, and I haven't had to use port 885 at all. Here is the output of 885. If you notice that when you're doing remote debugging, which I'm doing over here, um, it will tell you in 885, basically remote debugging is in process. You can't do anything really on 8085. And all the output that would have gone to 885 will now come to wherever your remote debugger is. So again, just running my channel and, I, and it's got some prints in it. So you can see that it's working as I press the OK button. And so let's quit this guy. And I'm gonna put my stop back in so you can see how that works. So what I'm doing here is um, I just did help so that it would tell me what environment variables it looked at so I could set them all so I don't have to type it in every time. So now if I just do the Roku debug on the same program, and it's removing the dev channel, and my channel is now running as evidenced by the print in my init there. One of the things I didn't show before is if I hit control C, it actually does stop the channel, very much like the onboard debugger. Uh, you should have the same functionality as the on onboard debugger. Um, and now that I'm in here, I can 
print variables, look at how variables exist, print the value of individual variables, etc. So let's go continue that. And I'm going to hit OK. Um, so we have we put that stop in in this event handler. So now um, it stopped at the stop. And if I do a list, it shows me the source code here and where the location of the current program counter is. One thing that's um, interesting here that it actually shows you the statement that just executed, not the one that it's going to execute. So in this case, stop has executed. If when I, when I hit step, it's actually going to execute this OK here. Um, so let me, let me go and do that. So if I do step, and there's my OK, and step. In this case, it's going to go into function 2. Again, if I do a list now, um, one of the things you notice is that I have to keep doing list here to kind of get my bearings of where I am within my own source code. Um, when we, If we had a Visual Studio Code plugin, that would be much more obvious to just be on the, on the screen. But in any case, the list command can be used here to figure out where you are. Um, step again. Um, out, which would, so if I do, you see here that I'm sitting at the first line of this function. If I do out, then it will automatically step out of this function to the calling function. And again, I'm back to the, to the calling function. So the channel is running. Um, I'm going to hit OK again, which will cause me to stop in my event handler again. And there it is. Um, so one thing you've noticed, if I do a var here, I see these variables. Um, and if I go a step a couple of times, I end up down in this func2, right? Let me do a backtrace to see my stack trace. There shows me the variables. And my variables are different now because I'm in a different function, obviously. And I can move up and down. So if I go back up or down, I can, I can look at the various, various uh, stack frames in my current stack trace. I'm going to go ahead and let's just go and do a continue again. So one of the things is the step functionality. Uh, step over and out um, actually will be in the next release of Roku OS. They did not make it in 9.2. So those those will be missing from a, uh, a current implementation, which will allow you to stop and inspect everything, but doesn't allow you to do step functionality. OK, so what I'm going to demo now is Visual Studio Code um, with a an adapter that we built in-house as a proof of concept of integration with this new debug protocol. Uh, again, this is an internal product. We don't really plan to release it. We're hoping that perhaps the developer community can can work with us and build either de debug adapter protocol or a plugin for Visual Studio Code directly. Integration, it uses the same protocol as the Roku debug does. So for instance, here I'm looking at my source code. Um, I've still got my stop in here. Oh, let's just, let's take that out. So. So I can show that I'm actually running the source code that that I think I'm running. Okay, so if you look at our plugins, we've we've installed our Roku Debug plugin, which is again a, an internal proof of concept that we did. Um, and I go into my debug functionality, which shows me Roku Debug. And here's my configuration for the VS Code plugin. And I just want to verify my IP address and password are correct. Save that. And now all we have to do is press this little green arrow and it will launch for us. And it's installing. And we're connected. Okay, so the channel is running. Um, I can press OK and I see my output. Remember I took my stop out. Well, you can see the code right here. The stop is commented out. So now I'm saying I, I do want to put that stop in. I want to see what the heck's going on with those variables or whatever. So stop that guy. And then let's take our stop out here. Save that and launch. So if you notice, I mean, this seems pretty common these days, I guess. But if you notice, I've never had to leave the IDE that I'm actually controlling the Roku from within Visual Studio Code. I can write the code, I can debug, I can inspect variables, as you'll see here in a sec, um, without having to go through the app installer and, and tell it to 885 and coordinating all those things. So uh, let me go ahead and I'm running this thing now. Um, let me go ahead and OK, hit OK, and it will hit my breakpoint. And there's my breakpoint. And if you notice, again, all my variables over here. And again, this is a little bit easier than using you know, a, a command line tool because you have your visual 
presentation here and you can just drill down to these as far as you want and, I, and I'm going to show here I'll do a couple of steps and I'll end up down here in, in funk 2 again so if I do step step even as soon as I land in that function all of my local variables here changed um, and again you can you can dig down through here here's we all know what m.top is right that's your um, or your well, it's your main scene in this case. Top is the node that con contains this script. So, so most of the same functionality still applies. So here's a here's a step out, right? So if I click on this, it's going to go back up to the calling function. All my variables change again. My PC changes. Uh, I can do a continue. So now it's running again. Um, I just want to demo this step over functionality one more time. So hit OK. I'm at my breakpoint again. If I do step over this time, if you notice, again, it just steps over that function and the output is lost. Um, okay, so anyway, that's th pretty much it. It. So again, the stop functionality, uh, these three buttons, unfortunately, uh, aren't in the latest release of Roku OS, which is 9.2, but uh, they will be included in the next release. Um, everything else is included um, as standard part of the product. And again, Roku Debug is out there and can be used, as well as documentation of the protocol that we've been talking about. There actually is a page that, that pretty, pretty rigorously defines that protocol and how it works. So one other interesting piece of functionality, of course, is that I can say, just restart this thing. And channel's running again. So again, this, this plugin is um, a proof of concept, but it is entirely feasible for a third party to develop any type of plugin they'd like to use this, this debugging protocol to, to integrate with just about any, any um, integrated development environment. So thank you. That is the end of our demo for today.